Hello friends. So in this video, we'll continue with our previous discussion. We were discussing hardware control unit design. And then see in this video, we'll continue with the discussion on that same topic only. What we have seen in our last video is that to generate a control signal, we need to write the control sequence for my instructions. And then we need to find the particular signal appearing in which of the instructions and at which particular step number. Step number and in which instruction it is appearing. These two prime things we need to find out. Right. And see whenever I am doing it, I am considering single bus CPU organization. So first step is to generate the uh, control sequence and then finding it out, then writing the logic function for the particular signal. So logic function, how we have come up? The instruction, step number, instruction, step number. And then many more possibilities are there because it is not possible for us to write it for all in one go. So here I'm just writing dot dot. That means many more possibilities are there. As well as when we will see one instruction is appearing in all the instructions in a particular step number. Please understand in all the instruction in the same step number. Then only the step number is written directly in the logic function because it means what t1.1 because it is applicable for all the instructions right that means you can write only t1 right so see here i do not mean that the c one particular signal is appearing in all the instructions then i'm not going to write the instruction no i don't mean that what i mean the particular instruction is appearing in a particular step number for all the instructions then I'm going to write the step number only. So this is how we are going to, sorry, this is how we are writing the logic function for a particular signal. So hope this Jardin signal is understood. Where from I was getting this uh, at T6, jump T4, that already I have shown you. And see here, whenever I'm writing the control sequence, I'm following single bus CPU organization. So then we have seen where it was coming, then we are combining them. And what we have seen in every instruction in step number one, it is coming. So I have written it directly. So after that uh, particular, uh, see, Jardin signal is there. We have seen. And then, see, we have seen that for add instruction in step number six. For branch instruction in step number four, that is the jump instruction. And for all other instructions in T1 step. So I'm not combining with any particular instruction. Directly I'm writing T1. And then many more possibilities are there. So that is shown here with the dotted lines. So for if this both the conditions are true, then also Jardin signal will be generated. If these two conditions are true simultaneously, then also Jardin signal will be generated. So what I'm saying, when both of them are true, that means it is an end, then this signal will be generated. Or if this both are true, then also I am doing it. That means what? Ultimately, I am doing OR operation, right? So OR is my output and the OR gate is taking input as your a number of AND gate terms, right? And then sometime directly also. So this is the logic level for your Jardin signal. Similarly, you can do it for AND signal also. AND signal was appearing in your ADD instruction at step number 7 branch on negative at step number five then uh, this one branch on negative step number four when the end flag value is zero then this one is for your jump instruction branch means only branch means it is a jump instruction in step number five as well as in many more state many more instructions this may appear so here we have written as a dotted line so this is the logic function for end signal if you need to draw the circuit for this, that is also very easy. What you will do? You will apply some AND gates and those AND gates outputs will be connected to a OR gate and that will be nothing but your this signal, AND signal, right? This will be connected here. Then whatever required inputs are there will provide. So this is how you can draw for AND signal also. So this is the Whatever I have explained is a general way of generating a signal, right? Using hardware control unit arrangement. So see here, 
now i'll go back to the uh, now i will take you back to your that block diagram of your hardware control unit right so see in our hardware control unit we have this encoder block that is guided by this instruction decoder as well as the step decoder and external inputs and your condition codes so see condition codes you have seen for this uh, and and signal branch on negative or br this br when n flag is 1 then in step number 5 n flag is 0 then in step number 4 and signal will be generated so see in some cases our condition codes are also playing a role whenever we are generating a signal so condition codes are also given as input to the encoder and whatever diagram i have drawn for jadin or uh, jadin signal that is nothing but this encoders work right and that is taking these things as a your input and see what is this external inputs see memory is going to give me mfc then i will come out of your waiting state right so these are my external input so some external input also guide us then condition codes also guide us instruction decoder and step decoder definitely ta uh, takes us to a particular signal so these four are the basic input that is required by hardwired control hardwired control unit design to generate signals so so see though i said step decoder but this step decoder itself is guided by the clock so clock is one of the input systems clock is one of the input to your control unit so that indirectly we are saying contents of control step counter that is connected to this decoder then instruction register contents of ir right then flags condition contents of condition code flag is also known as status word status register or condition code register condition code many names are there both all they mean same only that various flags then control signals from external bus that is your mfc coming from memory so see using these four inputs we used to generate the signals now the point is if it is the block diagram of hardware control unit and the working principle then we need to say that hardware control unit generates control signal based on these four inputs right and then the system clock is connected with your control step counter as the clock moves forward see clock will move on right clock is doing his uh, that um, oscillations are there in the clock so as the oscillations are moving forward our control step counter will be also incremented clock pulse number one i am step number one clock pulse number two i will be in step number two that means what clock input is taken by a control step counter as the clock is advancing control step counter will be also incremented but in some cases it will be in freeze state that means it will not move forward it will be in the same step only please try to remember when we have written the control signals see whenever you have given wmfc this is in step number two we have given wmfc but when you will come out of wmfc then only you will go to step number three but how much time is required to receive the mfc is not certain it may take one clock cycle it may take two depending on the speed of the memory so once i get mfc then only i can move to step number three but my clock will continue to move right clock is oscillating clock is advancing but my step counter will not be incremented as till i receive mfc from memory once i receive mfc from memory then in the next clock cycle i will be in the step number three so see mostly whatever step numbers we are writing they are equivalent to one clock cycle but it is not a generalized statement where it is differing whenever i am waiting for someone i am waiting from memory for mfc so memory may take some time i do not know the exact value it is uncertain so due to that i may have to wait more than one clock cycle so the width of this step may be more than one clock cycle so though i am writing here step three this does not mean it is clock cycle number three it may be clock cycle number four it may be clock cycle number five also right depending on the speed of the memory so see whatever i have said that also i need to incorporate here so see clock will be advancing and control step counter need to be incremented but at some time we need to stop we need to be at the same state only 
so that is when we are waiting for mfc so when we have given wmfc signal that time we were not, we are not going to increment the control step counter with the advancement of the clock right so and when we'll start doing it when we receive the mfc so how this is incorporated here by this run signal this run signal is new to us run signal value when it is one that time see this run signal is given to this control step counter when it is one when the value is one control step counter will be incremented with the advancement in the clock but when run signal is zero but the question is when it will become zero it becomes zero whenever we have given a wmfc signal so run will become zero as long sorry as soon as we give wmfc signal and when run is zero control step counter will not be advanced with the advancement in the clock will be in the same step only as as soon as we receive mfc run will become one then in the next clock pulse step counter will go to the next step so this will be given to step decoder and that is connected to my encoder so see which step i am currently in which instruction i am executing taking this to as as well as your mfc signal condition codes as and when they are required we are generating the various signals hope this part is clear so basically in hardware control unit what we are doing we are generating the signals with the help of hardware and those hardware are interconnected via wires so see uh, how they are becoming faster see to the hardware simply you provide the input whenever the situation occurs instantly the signal will be generated because see whenever you are executing add instruction you are in step number 7 directly the add in signal will be generated we need not have to think of anything right so in that sense it is faster but the point is it is in not flexible relatively inflexible what does it mean if i adding one new instruction to my instruction set what i have to do for my this control unit design i have to write the control sequence for that and whatever signals are appearing in this particular sequence for all of them their gate circuit i need to change this circuit i need to change for all the signals that are appearing in the control sequence for the newly added instruction so this is a big task and suppose i am removing one instruction then also i need to change all the circuits wherever the signals are appearing right so due to that it is said that hardware control signal hardware control unit design is relatively inflexible but it is faster hope this hardware control unit design is understood okay i forgot to mention one more big point sorry this and signal what is the job of this and signal and signal is also connected to step decoder so see every time i am executing a instruction i am starting a instruction i start from step number 1 2 3 but my clock is advancing right clock is going on but step counter once this instruction is over next instruction again will start from 1 2 3 like this only so whenever the and signal is generated then control step counter will be reset to the initial value so it will again start from 1 then 1 2 3 means again it will start from 1 and with the advancement in the clock step counter will be incremented so and signal will see and signal is not that it will end it and signal will reset the control step counter to the initial value and run signal value when it is 1 then step counter will be incremented with the advancement in the clock but when it ever is zero then control step counter value will remain the same though the clock is advancing so this is all about your hardware control unit design and in the next video we'll see some problems related to hardware control unit right thank you and if you are getting from my explanations then please do not forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you